Hi, I'm Chris Burroughs from Fairhaven Seventh-day Adventist Church, and I want to show you today how to set up Proclaim to be to show something different on two separate monitors. Okay, um, why might you want to do that? Well, let me let me show you what we have going at um, currently. Okay, so in the center of the screen, you you see the main controls, but then on the left monitor, uh, you see what the congregation might want to show we show this usually on big screens in, in, in front of the um, in front of the church but the right monitor is set up now so that um, the same information can be in a smaller format to be keyed over your live stream um, so that the people online see something a little different they can see the information but they can also see what the congregation what the service is showing okay so let me show you how we do that okay so I'm going to take you into proclaim first so we can see proclaim and here we are so here we are inside proclaim and uh, there's a few things you need to set up first before you can do that okay our main goal is to have two separate things so that right now I'm showing you the uh, the slides panel and then I also have a screen set up for what we call the lower third but the um, when you first start proclaim you won't get that lower third screen there you, um, it only starts with slides then these other these other ones that you have so let me show you how we get to that okay so the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna go up to where it says uh, settings and we're gonna pick display okay now in display uh, the top one that we have there uh, there's a section for this is virtual screens and a section that says outputs Okay, now virtual screens are the ones that are on your computer and what you actually see. So we, it comes with the slides, it comes with confidence, it comes with notes, but it doesn't come with the lower thirds. And so what you would have to do is hit add virtual screen and then you would name it lower thirds um, and you'd set it up to have to be 16 by 9 or whatever it is that you, you want it to be. Okay. And then that still doesn't um, send it to your monitors yet so then you, you got to figure out how you're going to set up your monitors well display zero is my left monitor uh, then i have two is my center monitor and three is my right monitor in this case and notice how each one has something in blue so you can click on that little blue thing and you can pick which what, what you want to show on that monitor so on um my left monitor i have the slides on my center monitor, I click not use because I want that to stay in my controls. I don't want anything else showing up on there. And then my right monitor, I clicked and I chose lower thirds down there at the bottom. Okay. And I'm not using a low, uh, an NDI display, but if I was, I'd want it to show the lower thirds in this case. Okay. So there you go. And then you can also choose how big the um, and where messages would go out over those monitors you know, if you send them out. Okay. Then you just close that. And now we're ready to start setting it up. Okay, so how do you set it up? How do I get it so that um, what I see on my main monitor is different from what I see on my other monitor? Okay. Um, oh, there's one other thing that we need to fix. Um, yeah, underneath uh, settings again, back to display. Uh, on this lower thirds monitor, okay, um, I'm going to click this little gear. And now the lower thirds one has will have a transparent background. You're not going to have a background on that. And so how do I want that 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 uh, transparency to look? So it says output transparency, transparency color. Do I want it to be black so I can key it with a, um, a luminous keyer? Or do I want it to be green or blue so I can key it with a chroma keyer? Um, I'm going to pick green on my case. So even though it'll look like it's uh, um, clear when we're working on it, when I go to display it, it will have that green background. Okay, so now, how do we set these up? Okay, um, the way that you set up your slides now um, and so, uh, is kind of cool. Uh, one important thing is that you want to get it so that um, you don't have to change the information on both slides. Now, notice, notice how, for example, um, I'm on this slide now, it says Praise and Worship, and the top one is the title for Praise and Worship, the bottom one is the praise team is performing this week or next week let's say but let's say i wanted somebody else to to be performing or change the name of who's performing for the for the following week um i could put in um fox one um that's our voices of harmony uh group uh down there um and then notice how it changed it here um and it should be changing it on the uh on the 
Yeah, it changed it right there on the on the, um, the lower third one as well. So all I had to do is change it on one slide, and it fixed it on both of them. You know, and that's the nice thing about the way these are set up. Uh, they're what we call smart um, smart media. So let's. How do you do that? How do you get it so the text will say this? Will say the thing. Uh, something cool too is that when you're using smart media for like uh, songs and stuff, um, even though the. Uh, so I'm going to come down here to um, one of the songs. Okay, and it looks like uh, this on the main slide. It looks like this on the lower third sl slide. The songs automatically um, update and fill properly. Um, let me show you what I'm talking about. So I'm going to show you my uh, all the screens at the same time. So on this on this view, uh, you have the top left is my left monitor, top right is my right monitor, and the um, uh, the, the main one there. Okay, so I'm going to go into um, go on air, and I go on air. One of my songs, okay, for example, here, and notice how even with the with the songs, the information that you see is different. Okay, um, it's formatted differently, um, and all you gotta do is change the uh, song title. Okay, um, let me go into edit so you can see what I'm talking about. So I choose edit. Um, all I would do is change the name of the the, the song. And it would automatically update and fix all those words on all the screens. And that's kind of cool. Okay, I'm not going to do that right now. I'm going to show you how to do that. Okay, so let me come off off of on air. I'm going to get it back so you can see me full screen. Okay, and then um, we're going to go into. Uh, well, I'm going to click on uh, something something at the beginning here. Okay, and then how do we make these screens so that the the text works properly? Well, you go into where it says media, and you create what's called smart media. And then it gives you some options. Which one are you wanting to create? Well, do I want a song, a bio verse, announcement, you know, content, or the um, header? In this case, I, I want to do a header. So I'm going to click on header. I click choose, and it gives me a, um, a screen that's already set up. Now, if I click on this top one, this top information goes with that. This bottom one, the bottom information goes with that. Okay. So, I'm going to click the top one. Um, it has a hint text. Well, what, um, this is going to be usually your order of service in my case. I'm going to type in order. Oops. Type properly order of service. And then. The bottom one is usually going to be the person that's uh, doing it. Okay, so person presenting. Okay, um, so for example, what's what's one of the orders of service? Usually the offering. So let's say offering for that order of service. And uh, for this one down here, um, person presenting. Let's say Elder Smith. Okay, and there you have it. But notice how there is no background here. Um, so this is for the main slide. I'm going to want to have a background usually for that the one I showed to the congregation. So I'm going to choose, click here. I'm going to choose background. I'm going to just pick blue. For now. I could later on, you know, have imported a background or gotten some media from the media bank. But I'm just going to click a blue background. Now we can alter our text and make them look a certain way. So let's go. Um, click on the offering one. And I'm in a, yeah, bold is fine. I'm going to turn bold off if I want. Um, how do I want it centered? Okay, well, I want it, I want it to be in the center of the, uh, the box that's there. So I'm going to put this, uh, uh box. Is it up? Uh, what color do I want it? Well, white is fine, but, um, let's try something just to be creative right now. Let's just try yellow. Okay. Um, okay, what about effects? Okay, right now it's got this outer kind of, Glow. I'm not too keen on that one, so I'm going to turn that off. Um, but I'm going to use what traditionally we, we would uh, use called a drop shadow. Put a little drop shadow in there. Um, I could edit the drop shadow um, and make it a little darker or bigger or whatever. Um, uh, the direction that it's that is coming from, you know, and change, just fix it, make it look, look a, little, a little different. You know. well, let's try 300. Okay. Don't really see it there. 
Um, it's only three pixels. Let's try five pixels. Okay, not seeing much of it. Not much of a change, but you can alter it. You know, make it a little bit bigger there. Okay. Um, and then possibly you might want to have a, a um, an outer an outer stroke sometimes. Okay, and you can also edit what color that outer stroke is as well. Okay, or I could just could have just picked one of these styles and had to go to one of those uh, styles. Let's see if I if I picked um, breezy, it would automatically go to that style. Okay, I'm gonna hit Control Z to undo that style. Okay, and then um, well, I already showed you backgrounds. Let me just pick the color, but I could have picked the foreground, or I could, I could I mean I could have added another text. Okay. Um, or I could um, add a foreground. Okay. Uh, now it says add smart text. So let me see what happens if I click that. I'm going to add a text box here. And no, oh, notice what happens is I, I got another text box, and this text box is another smart one, so it will carry over and do things. I can size it over here. Okay. Um, I could choose to center that smart text there. Okay. Um, and um, maybe this one is going to be a. Um, Yeah, uh, let's see. Uh, I'm not sure you really say anything about it, but uh, uh, let's have the name of the church. Okay. Okay. And I'm going to put that in the actual text. In this case, and I'm going to shrink it down. That's not really crucial to have that big. But right there might be nice. Okay, something like that. Okay, so I'm ready now. I'm gonna hit save. I'm gonna give it a title. Uh, test ti title two for, for me, for example. Right now, I can say what it what it's doing, and I'm going to save it. Okay. And then it says go to media browser. So I click on go to media browser. Your browser pops up. And there it is right there. It's called test title 2. Uh, but it's not yet part of my service. So I'm going to hit add as new content item. And there it is. Test title 2. Oh, but what happened? There's no uh, words there. What's going on? The words are there, but the, the, the boxes for the words are there, but it's blank. So it's a template that, that, you can, that you can utilize. Notice how the slides and the lower thirds look exactly the same right now. Lower thirds doesn't have any real controls, but the, slide, the main slide one has the controls. So let's put the information back in there again, and, and you'll notice that, the, that when I put it in, the, um, the, uh, it has the same formatting as what it, did, what it did before. The person was um, uh, Elder Smith. And then I could choose to put the church name there or not, but um, we'll go ahead and edit. Okay. There we go. So, so this is cool. Look at lower thirds. The side looks exactly the same. You can even tell that I clicked the tab up there. But the slides look exactly the same. Okay. But now here's where the cool part comes. Okay, so yes, they look exactly the same. But I want my lower thirds to look different. First off, I don't want my lower thirds to have a background. So I'm going to click Remove Background. But notice that the slides stayed on there. Okay. Nextly, I don't need the uh, Fairhaven Church one on this uh, back one. So I could delete it from... Um, I'm going to right click on it and choose delete from from that one. Okay, but notice how it stayed on the front one. Okay, um, and then these obviously aren't going to need to be up that big, so I'm going to pull them down, make them smaller. Um, and they're going to be down here somewhere different. Okay, um, now what about the uh, the background? You know, I, I, I might want a different background or something different. Well, 
this case, I don't, I don't want a background, you know, I mean, unless it's a clear background. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and choose a, I'm going to choose a foreground item. So I'm going to come up to uh, here where it says add foreground image. And I'm going to not just add an image, but I'm going to choose uh, browse the media. And I need to f look for lower third. And I actually have one that I made. So I'm going to type in lower third. And there you go. Here's the one that I made myself. Uh, just did it in um, Photoshop and make sure that was a PNG with a clear background. Okay. And then I'm going to now choose apply as foreground. Okay. I don't want to choose it as a background because if I choose it as a background, it's stuck there. But if I choose it as a foreground, I can move it around. So I'm going to go, I'm going to go actually I'm going to add to foreground. So I click on add to foreground. And there it is. Like I said, you know, I can size it up, make it bigger, and interesting enough, it is below the other object still. Okay, so I'm gonna put it down here in the corner. Um, this for this one, I'm I want the person's name to be prominent, so I'm gonna take the person's name and bring that up there. I'm gonna take the actual thing it was, bring it down there, and now I just size these boxes to match the boxes that I'm trying to put them in. Drag the corner. Corner. There it is. Let me slide this one up. And this one up. And uh, you notice how the formatting on it's a little different. I don't need them at the top, I want them down at the middle. So I'm going to go there and pick middle. So it's set into the middle. Um, and there you have it. Okay, actually, we can probably bring this over. And there you go. Okay, and so now the original slide it looks one way, and the lower third looks another way. If I choose to, I can change this original slide's background now as well. So let's try that. Let's go to background. And this time I'm going to browse the media for a background this time. So I'm going to browse media. And I'm going to get rid of where it says lower thirds. And let's see what we have. Okay, now most of these are ones you got to pay for. But I think there's one I saw down here that was free. Um, and let's see. Um, well, maybe this one's free. Yep, that one's free. Nope, nope. You've got to pay for that one too. Uh, but there, there was like a Christmas one I saw that was. Um, Free. I guess I should say owned. Yeah, okay, yeah, so this one. Um, we click on that one. And I'm going to choose apply as background. Okay, there we go. So that's the background. And we can bring this up. We can take Elder Smith's name up. And maybe put this one down at the bottom or in a corner or something like that. You just need to be smaller still. Um, okay, there we go. And check the lower third. Lower third so it looks the way it does. Okay, and so that is ready to go. That slide is ready. Um, except the name of it. Change over here. So let me click on the name. And this is, um, I'm going to call it Offering Now. Now, usually, if I want to do another slide that has the same formatting as this, and I just want to change, like, out the person's name and what the title is, I would come over here to where it says the, the thing, and I would click Duplicate. And then now that it's down here, I could change it out to what the next title is. So let's say the next thing in the, in the service is um, Prayer. Okay, and then up here I would just change uh, from offering, I would change it to where it says prayer. And instead of Elder Smith, maybe this time it's um, Elder Jones. Okay, so Jones. Um, and then I could check my uh, lower third, and that is Elder Jones doing the prayer. Okay, so that is fine. Go back to the offering one, that's fine too. Okay, 
But now let's see how this looks on the uh, on the big screen. Okay, so I'm going to go to I'll show you guys uh, all of the screens. I'm going to come up to number uh, uh, one. Oh, what's this? And I'm going to go on air. Okay, and there we go. So there's the uh, praise and worship going on. Okay, now, this middle screen that I have is called a confidence monitor. You know, when you're on air, you can pick this little arrow here, and you can choose what you should see in the center there. So I can see slides, or I can pick it and so see what the lower thirds was showing. Okay, um, Or I could come here and choose confidence monitor. Now, confidence monitor, this one you could project to the out to the um, usually to the back of the auditorium, so the people up there not only do they see the the slide that's showing, but they also have a clock, and they have what the name of the slide is, so they know what's where it is in the order of service coming up. Okay, let's go through some of these because this is here's the one that we made. Okay, for the offering, here's one we made for prayer, and then uh, here are some of the ones that that um, we're actually using in the service. Now. One of the cool things, like I said, is that uh, when it comes down to um, um, monitors, you can make them look exact. You know, so right now, for example, these are some some of the slides that we're using for the uh, for the titles that were. I mean, for the uh, announcements, so the so the audience can see what's on the uh, left monitor, right? it's the one over here, and the uh, um, people online can see this on what's on this right monitor, this one over here. Okay. Um, I'll just show you how they look completely different, or has some similar elements to them, but they look uh, completely uh, different. And I, and in this case, if you set them up properly, uh, you just have to put your information in one time on one slide, and it'll, it'll, it'll update it on the other ones uh, the same uh, way. Okay, okay, that should do it for today. So thank you for listening, and. Uh, have a good rest of your day. Hi, I'm Chris Burrows, and I'm continuing the series uh, of showing you how to put two separate things on your monitors uh, using Proclaim uh, and working with the ATM Mini, uh, how to key it out and that kind of stuff. I'm going to show you that right now. Okay, so to tell you what I'm talking about, um, I've got this uh, praise and worship large screen uh, what the sanctuary is seeing there. Um, but in, in the fellowship hall, I mean, I mean online, they're also seeing the exact same thing. So in the ATM Mini, I've got the exact same thing going to it. And we want to know how can I show something different uh, on the uh, uh, to, to the people that are in the um, there. Okay. Well, to do that, there's a couple of settings you got to change first. So I'm going to come up here. I'm going to settings, and I'm going to hit, hit display. Okay. Now I want you to be able to see that screen a little bit better. So let me get uh, so I can get a close up of. Uh, that screen for you okay so notice how we've got the slides and the and the lower third set up but they're not showing that way so I've only got on this computer I only have two monitors um, so the main one the big one I'm not using it uh, to show anything and right now the, the second monitor the little one um, all I see is slides and so I click on slides and I switch that to lower third okay and then I come over to my gear and I know that right now, transparency is set up for black on the background, but I want it to be that, that, that fluorescent kind of green. Uh, so I hit click on that right there uh, instead, and I hit save. Okay, and then I close that out. And then now um, I, I look and I see, okay, well, nothing's changed. I'm going to come back so you can see me. Um, okay, so, so on this, uh, you can see on this side monitor that it still is just showing um, that same blue um, as the other one. It's not showing the other thing that's uh, that's there. Okay, and so how do I get that? Well, I got to go off air and then come back on air. So I go off air, I come back on air, and now you see there is a difference in what the main monitor is seeing and then what the other one is seeing, and that the what what was clear in the background is showing up as green on here, and I just have to key out what's the, the green. So that people online will see it, uh, will see it differently. Okay. So how do I key out the green? Okay. So I'm going to come back so you can see my um, my large monitor, and I, I'm going to open up the ATM Mini controllers. Um, so there's a 
software on your computer that has the ATM Mini controls. And notice how here I can I can control my camera the same way I, I did with the other one. And I notice the camera four is the one that has has the green uh, on it. Okay, so I need to use camera four. So I come over here to my uh, I come over here to my keyer. Usually it, it starts out a Luma keyer, um, but I want to use the Chroma keyer. So I click on Chroma, and then the, the camera or the source that that's going to have that that I want keyed is camera four. I could, pick, then I could pick one of the other cameras, but camera four is the one that I, I'm going to have keyed. Okay, and so uh, right now that's set up to, to work. Uh, I'm going to scroll down, and, and and if the key wasn't good, I could do. You know, I could click Chroma sample, and I could actually click click a spot where on the screen I know the key is, and have it pick the sample. But I know that this is a perfect uh, perfect um, key setup because of that color that it is. And I, and I can adjust that key afterwards too. But I don't need to deal with any of that. All I have to do is come over here to where it says on air and click on air and that will bring it up. Notice how uh, it's keying over camera four. Now how would I do that if I, if I don't have the software up? Well, on the ATM Mini itself, so let me uh, turn off off air for right now. I could click the on air again and it turns it off. ATM Mini itself, it's got these six keys you know, on, on the end down here. And one says key and it has off. If I click on the on button right above it, that's one on the far left of the six keys, uh, it brings it on. And I can turn it off, I can turn it off, off and on. Okay? Um, and what if I wanted to change the background? What if I want to see this image instead of the, uh, instead of the, 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 the main image here? Um, well, I can, on, on the AT Mini, I can switch over to it. But notice that when I switch, when I switch from one camera to the other, that um, I can turn it on, but it popped it off while, when, I, when I was doing the switch. It, it popped it off temporarily, okay? Um, and so when you, whenever you switch from one camera to, back to the other, it will, it will pop off the key. You have to just turn it back on again by hitting the on button, okay? Well, so what's the advantage of that? Well, let's look and see. I'm going to lower this screen down so you can see it. Um, well, notice how people in the in the sanctuary will see this larger welcome and opening prayer, while people in the um, fellowship hall will see this uh, this other one. Okay. Um, now let's 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 see how some, how some of these might look different. Okay. So going on to my next next presenter, um, you know, notice how it switches. Okay, now, here's a big one that's different. The uh, tithe and offering. Um, I have a big one for the sanctuary and a smaller one, like the one that you're seeing down there, uh, for the um, uh, people online. Okay. A couple, couple different ones here. I'm trying to get some ideas of how they can look different, how you can set them up differently. Okay. Now, one of the key things, uh, the spe special one especially, is the... Uh, uh, things like songs. Okay, so let's look at the um, marching design. Notice how large screen, all colorful like that, and small screen there. We'll go through part of the verse. Let's see the differences between them. Okay, and then let's go down and let's pick um, uh, something like uh, the sermon. large screen one is quite a bit different from the small one that you see down there, okay? And uh, what about the Bible verse? Okay, okay. Nice and big so people in the audience can, can read it on, up here, but then look how attractive it looks um, in the smaller version uh, that you see on your screen down bottom down there, okay? Um, now I decided that I'd give them some options as how they can do it differently. Uh, for the Bible verse, so I, I, pick, I picked a second style format for the Bible verse. Okay, so here's one, and there's the other one that you're seeing down there right below me. Okay, um, and then when you don't want it on, I hit the uh, off button, and it pops it off. Okay, if you want to bring it back again, the on button, and it's back on again. Okay. Um, now, like I said, one of the things you always have to watch is. Uh, during the 
um, time in the story, time in the video, if there's something that comes in that um, has green in it, like this uh, this little children one, you know, if there's a green on here that is close to the same color green uh, that the key that's being keyed out, it may vanish. So notice how this green uh, by, up, up by their feet is very close to the same color. So if I had the key on it, it, it is vanishing it out some. So I'm going to turn the key off. And um, in that case, we would want to go straight to the, um, uh, the slide itself, which is number four. So I hit that and I hit auto. And now they have it. And that green is not being affected anymore by by the keyer, okay? It's just in case. I mean, you know, it doesn't usually, if, it hasn't affected it that much, but um, when, they, when people were keying before using the, um, the Luma keyer, things like the, the blacks would vanish instead. So that's why the Chroma key is a little better choice um, for this kind of thing. So it doesn't vanish out the um, uh, blacks. People see, see people, you'll see through it to the background. Display, and let's, uh, Come back down to the uh, um, almost ready for the uh, benediction. And I'm going to turn the key back on, and there we go. Okay, and that's the end of the service. Okay, so I'm going to turn it off, and I will say goodbye to you. Hopefully, you've learned something, and hopefully, this was useful for you. Have a good day.